Okay, so yesterday you saw this tech box. I'll quickly run through the production process for it, etc., etc. Today we're looking at the deck. So, yeah, I picked up sleeves, there are only 95 in the little bag, so uh, I've sleeved the commanders and the tokens and nothing else. We'll get to that in a moment. Rest of the contents of the box then. These two incredibly fucking small spin downs. Where's the, uh, yeah, you can see. Teeny tiny little baby planeswalker symbol on them. So the real deal. And a uh, jeweler's loop with five times magnification, which I'm gonna try and uh, stick onto the camera here to see what happens. Get magnified, idiot. So here we have Anax and Saimedi, first commander. The loop does nothing there. And for the second commander, we have the Lucranos World Eater. Well, obviously this deck was originally done by Ben Brode, uh, who had a, an oversized Thraxamunda in the command zone, which is just so fucking cool. Oh yeah, tokens. <laughs> because, you know, I have access to two tokens, and by god I'm gonna use them. We have a griffin and a beast, and that's all we need. Unfortunately, beast really never came up, but I did manage to give most of my opponents a tiny card at some point regardless. It was fucking brilliant. Anyway, it's uh... You know, the deck isn't in any particular order, just cause... Well, it's a lot less coherent than what I'm used to. Quick size comparison first, however, is the uh, tiny card next to a normal size card. And if we pull this back slightly, we can go one, two, three, and four. And demonstrate that, um, yeah, <laughs> they're, four they're one quarter the size of a normal card. Eevee's here to steal them. Hello, Eevee. You can see a paw there. Little beans. Hello. Okay, so let's look at the uh, commanders first. Annex and. Evie, please, please. And I'm actually inside Eddie. First strike vigilance, and when you cast a bullet, target it, creature second target, plus one, plus one, trample till end of turn. Yeah, decent. Nice little trample enabler. Probably a decent build around. I wouldn't know. And Pelucranos World Eater. XX, 2X in green for monstrosity X. It becomes monstrous, it gets counters, and. When it becomes monstrous, it deals X damage divided and I choose among any number of target creatures your opponents, my opponents control. Each of those creatures deals damage equal to its power to Pelucranos. Thankfully that didn't, uh, well that didn't come up. At least not the damage in Pelucranos part, as at no point did either of my commanders lead the battlefield. Except when I just fucking died. Anyway. Let's quickly uh, look through the deck itself. Let's only grab a few chunks at a time. We have planes. Planes, because you, know, you need some basic lands. Shower of Sparks. Which counts as interaction. It's useless. But by God, does it count. A mountain for mountaining. Bombs of Faith. Which is useful as long as you have an action somebody on board. Uh, Chat creature gets plus two plus two uh, as long as it's a human, otherwise I can't attack our block. Uh, this can shut down your opponent's dangerous blockers. I, although I did have to use something else to do the same thing in one of the games. We'll get there when I uh, get to that. So 
this is just going on interaction because fuck it. Target blocking creature gets plus seven plus seven to limit turn. Griffin guide. The giant creature gets plus two plus two and has flying. When it dies, I get the white griffin token. A Johnny's pride mate. Whenever I gain life, I put a one one counter on it. A forest for foresting. Gus Cloak Sentinel because I needed more creatures. When Hurt Gun's blocked, I can tap it and remove it from combat. I may untap it and remove it from combat. It's not great, but it's in here. Forest. Lead the Stampede. Top five cards in my library. Reveal any number of creature cards from among them. Put them into my hand. Put the rest in the bottom in any order. This may actually be the only draw piece in the deck. We'll see. Stand firm. Target creature gets plus one plus one to land a turn. Strike two. It, it's adequate. It's actually, I don't have a category for pump yet. That's uh, the Griffin boy to that. I guess Rikerson feels more like interaction, so it can only be used on a blocking creature. Other plains, another mountain. You're going to see a lot of basics here. Ageless Entity. Whenever I gain life, put that many 1 1 counters on Ageless Entity. Yeah, there's a life gain theme because I didn't have much of a choice. Maurice's Twin Claws. Double Strike. That joins the I Needed More Creatures theme. Mantain. Sun Titan, because I need some decent cards in here. So whenever it uh, ETBs or attacks, I can recur stuff from Bin. That goes into recursion. Lightning Helix, an actually good card. And fucking scary and standard right now. A friend of the channel Toru runs these in a uh, prowess deck, and they kick some surprising amounts of ass. Volt Charge. Volt Charge is less good. Deal three damage to a creature or play it. Proliferate. It's in there because it can damage things. At great cost. Another mountain. Beast within. A little more for the interaction pile. Another plains. True Fire Paladin. Uh, it's Vigilance and it has red and white for double fire breathing or red and white for singular first strike breathing. Good enough. It's, yeah, I guess that counts as pump. It can pump itself. Evolving Wilds, because we actually have some non-basics in here. We'll count those up at the end. Briarhorn. ATB, target creature gets plus three, plus three, and a turn. It has flash, and I can evoke it. It goes in the interaction pie. That goes in pump. Skarg, the Rage Pips. Taps a one, all to give something trample. Actually, decent. Might need to run that in uh, so many other decks. Basic planes. Prey upon target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. <laughs> Close enough to interaction for my liking. Acidic slime, death touch. Destroy target artifact and chat on a land. I did have land removal. Holy shit! Did not know that. Kind of wish I'd uh, had more draw power now, just because well. The first round I was in was won by friend of the channel, Josh, running a Mace's End deck with um, Omneth, I believe four color Omneth, and uh, Talia and Gitrug, which was pretty fucking dangerous. That said, I was weirdly close to killing him with Pelucranos. We'll get to how when I get to the card that I was able to uh, use to my advantage. So, Grazing Glade Heart, whenever I land ETBs, gain two life. A little bit more life gain. Jungle Shrine. It's non-basic, all right. Planes. Pay no heed. Print all damage. Your source of your choice would deal this turn. That, that's going in interaction. And another forest. Next chunk. We have Terramorphic Expanse. We have another basic forest. Another good card. Fire to the Avamai. Creatures I control have haste. And stack it to get stuff plus two plus two to end a turn. Uh, I guess ca ca I'm counting on as pump, but like, Rogue's Passage is part of this deck's only real win con. Like, the goal is to get Pelucranus monstrous for an appreciable value with Rogue's Passage on board and just dome in for commander damage. Okay, 
Dragon Bloods. Three mana on tap, one counter on target creature. It, it, it's pump. It's not good pump, but it counts. Destructive to Revelry. Decent removal. Pride of Lions. In the same combat damage as though it wasn't blocked, more importantly, it's an creature. Staring Meditation. Whenever I gain life, I can pay two to deal two damage to whatever. Sure. That, yeah, let's count that as life gain. Another basic. Figure of Destiny. A card that I played once and it was removed before I could really get much value out of it. But it's still neat, you know? Like, if it sticks around long enough, you get an 8 8 flying first strike. Good shit. Doing for good damage with that. Let's go again, pump. Okay, Arthur is now here to cause trouble. Where were we? Condemn. Deals with an attacking creature, it goes into the increasingly oversized removal pile. Crater Hellion. Hey, an actual decent card. Uh, ETB deals four damage to each other creature. This is my board wipe. Regrowth. A little bit of recursion. Riku Gazi. It can do something. It's a land that can do a thing. Let's see. Basics. Basics. Magma Jet. Deals two damage to target creature or player. Strike two. It ain't good, but it's in here. Zotar Druid. It's a mana dork. It's the only thing in the ramp pile and likely to remain that way. Another forest. Icy Manipulator. Another interaction piece. Whims of Wrath. A board wipe that I was prevented from using by my own play. Kasali Pride Mage. Yeah, it goes into pump. It can be removal, but I use it as pump mostly. Silver Ranger. It fetches the land to hand. Fuck it, that's close. That's as close to ramp as I'm gonna get. Plains. Forest. Stun Sniper. Ping something, taps it down. It's interaction. Undying Rage. Right, so. I need to get damage through on Josh, as I was close to killing with commander damage. As the other players were Marcy, who... God, was it Marcy at that point? I think so. It was someone who was struggling with the, the deck doing what it was meant to do. Which I believe was Marcy, but in like a casual game afterwards it popped off and killed me on like turn 3 or 4. <laughs> It was uh, Balan and the cat with Exalted, and she was able to pump her commander to 11-11 um, with two pieces of equipment, which gave it double strike, <laughs> and it just insta-killed me. Anyway, yeah, so I uh, slapped my Undying Rage on Talia and Gitrog to get damage through Pelucranos, and if I hadn't done that, I would have been able to win the Wrath in a turn or two and clear everyone on the board Apart from whatever I am dying raged. Oh well. It goes into pump. Smite the monstrous. I did actually use this one genuinely decent piece of removal in the deck at one point, which worked out well. A Johnny. One of those things where like it's hard to appreciate how small text on this is if you're not seeing it in person. It's like it's like reading a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh card. Anyway. Plus one, Titan Pound doesn't untap during its control of next untap. Next two, it deals three damage to that creature, and I gain three life. And I can plus seven to destroy all lands target player control. <laughs> I did have land removal. But yeah, this is, I guess, just interaction. Which is looking about as thick as lands right now. No abilities of war. Attacking creature second control, I get plus two, plus oh, it goes into pump. Moment of heroism. Tiger gets plus two plus two lifelink land a turn. It's a pump card. It ain't a good one, but uh, it's one. Let's see. Wild the cattle, something that was decent. Something that I informed was decent in standard at one point. I only had played I only had forests out when I cast it, so it didn't really help me that much. But it's a creature that can potentially get bigger. 
It counts as a pump. Willie Thoctar. Three mana is decent enough for a keywordless 5 4, but it was in there just because I needed a creature. Aaron Viper deals combat damage to. It has Death Touch without having Death Touch. Well, it has Death Touch, but only in combat. Good god, it's a fucking draw piece. Let's see. Forest. Mountain. Plains. Pyroclasm. Mahila Potential Board Wipe. Plains. Daily Regimen. Enchant Creature. It gains. Uh, one white for put counts on it. It's a pump card. It counts. Recumbent Bliss is yeah, it's interaction, but it's life gain as well. Mountain. Macattel Hunt Bride. It's interaction. It can force ta it can force tax and blocks. Mountain. Behemoth Sledge. <laughs> This is this is the fucking thing that Narsi used to kill me. I just mentioned in the uh, sort of post event game. Fucking hell, what are the odds? Anyway, yeah, it's a really genuinely good card. Nice bit of pump. Naya Charm. It can hit something for three, it can recur, or it can tap stuff. I'm just going to put it in recursion because recursion needs the numbers. Planes, a Johnny's Mantra. Life game. Auromancer, another recursion piece. Miraculous Recovery. Recursion. Say to Hedonist, good god, more ramp. It can only be used once, but it counts. Luxor and Hierarch, another one that I'm informed was pretty good in standard at one point. Um, yeah, this was cast, then it was removed and subsequently stolen by a friend of the channel, Maya. Which means that more people got to experience the joy of tiny cards, so honestly, it's worth it. Anyway, that goes in life gain. Fireman Angel, be my upkeep if it's in my graveyard or on the battlefield, I may gain one. And it can self recur, but it's mostly a life gain piece. There's no payoff for the life gain, by the way. There's no Ether Flux Reservoir or anything like that in here. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be in the budget anyway, so this was the, the usual budget of 50 euros max. Well, 50 quid max. And no more than two quid a card. So, Skargon Skybreaker. I have this in Amicable Towns and never cast it. Uh, but, like, it potentially hit something for, for six if I pay eight, <laughs> which isn't fucking great. Yeah, but the way that it were, yeah, but the way that. Uh, it can be that instant speed is kind of useful, like that way I can effectively hit someone for six and then hit them for another six by sacking it, which is adequate, but it's still an creature. Terrifying Presence. Perennial Comet Damage will be dealt by creatures other than Tide Creature this turn. Sure. Planes. 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 Ordeal of Perfor is a card I got decent value out of. Enchant creature when it attacks, the one counter on it, and if it has three or more, sacrifice a little perforous. When I sack it, it hits someone for three. Vine Lash of Kudzu. Landfall, put one one counter on it. Pretty good actually, this was part of the uh, game that I managed to win. Death with Cobra can get itself reach in Death Touch. A good blocker, but mostly an creature. Battle Mastery, Enchant creature has double strike. God, I wish I'd managed to use that. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. That was the deck. Now, for the event itself, uh, first game was four-person pod. Uh, me, Maya, Josh, and... I want to say Marcy. Marcy had the... Uh, exalted cat Balan combo. Maya had something weird in Sultai that felt like it was better on paper than it was in practice. It was one of the um, Assassin's Creed legendaries that uh, whenever you play a historic permanent, it can't kind of block that turn. Whenever it deals combat damage, you get a 1-1 one -one counter. And then the other commander was half of a partner with, which was genuinely pretty interesting. 
Yeah, so it's hard to partner with that did. Um, basically, whenever you put counters on things, you double them. Uh, which meant that, yeah, sagas happened twice as fast. And the other commander got big twice as fast. But most of the removal was targeted on her. She was the biggest threat against Josh, uh, who was the eventual winner of the round, having played last in both previous events. So, you know, fuck yeah, good, good for him. Uh, he managed to maze his end just in time, as I pr there's good odds that I would have been able to get damage to return later and kill my commander damage. So, uh, that was game one. We then said based on life totals that uh, Maya and Josh went on to game two. I went on to the winner's pod along with Toru and I want to say Student was their fourth. As first and second from the other game that happened much quicker than ours. Because Jund gonna Jund. Anyway. Uh, yeah, game two was me versus Marcy again versus Jonathan who had um, two different... Theft Commanders in Blue, Red, Black. Both of them pirate related, which was honestly kind of neat to see. Anyway, um, yeah. All three was stuck on risky hands, and mine was the one that paid off, as everyone else was landstarred for pretty much the whole game. It turns out, if you only draw into four creatures, which isn't enough for Jonathan to use his Blast Act, <laughs> and no one else has a bulb state, this deck can just about win a game. It was fucking close. At one point, they were alive with one life and two life, respectively. And I was like, right, okay, I just gotta figure out some way to get the killing blow in. Next turn. I could have killed one of them that turn and won the other. But at that point, I was halfway confident I could rebuild ish. Even after a board wipe, because I hadn't, I hadn't enough to recast at least one of my commanders by that point. So, like, you know, you gotta go for something. Look, you gotta ask yourself sometimes what would Go Tanks do? And Go Tanks would do something flashy but ineffective. And that's my whole fucking playstyle. Anyway, yeah. Let's, so let's count things up. Let's commanders, basic lands, non basics, how many did we end up with? One, two, three, four, five. Six non-basics, including the Evolving Wild and the Terramorphic. That ain't good. Interaction. We're probably a little uh, over heavy on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This is about where I'd normally run interaction-wise. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 15, 16, 17, 18, when you have no ramp and two pieces of card draw 21 pieces of interaction is fair game <laughs> pump them the deck is meant to do in theory 1, 2, 3 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 9, 10 11, 12, 13, 14 15, 16, 17 and I saw very few of them <laughs> Which is the thing, if you have no draw power, you're not going to draw many cards. This was largely sold in the game against Josh, as he played, um, what was it, Concordant Crossroads? The thing where everyone draws a turn twice and gets two land drops. And granted, it won the game, but still, you know. Anyway. Uh, yeah, and creature, we have... Six. <laughs> Sometimes you need the numbers, and you just don't have many cards to work with. Like, the, okay, the tiny card pool is dual jet, dual decks, Johnny versus Bolas, and Jace versus Vraska, and Heroes versus Monsters. So that's what I had to work with here. I feel like I did about the best I could with what I had available. Yeah, so then, uh, recursion, well, life gain, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Enough for, like, eight pieces, enough for a halfway workable sub-theme. Recursion, five, 
six if you count. Uh, five Man Angel looking self recur. Adequate. Two pieces of RAM. Two pieces of draw power. And three pieces of ramp. So, by my reckoning then, I placed fifth out of seven in this as I came. And I was on the losers pod, but highest in them, but the other pod was four players. Honestly, I'm still happy with that. You know, I'm still like one of three. Hang on a second. Okay, so the event itself was won by Toru, who won rounds one and two. Josh won one game. I won one. So I was one of three people to actually win a game at this event. And I, I count that as a win. A win is a win. Anyway, let's just... Uh... Yeah, feature of this deck... Rebuilding into something else, because there's space in the deck box for a normal-sized commander. Or two. Or three, if I want to run uh, Companion. Speaking of commander sizes as well, um, Marcy used the oversized version of the Eminence Cat specifically because I'd done this, and that's his fucking power move, honestly. We respect that. Until then, however, I have a perfectly workable deck box for this stuff. So, Tiny Deck will return at some point in the eventual future. Who knows? Maybe the next one won't suck. See you then.